Oh. Is that Cordell? Cordell, nice to meet you, sir. Hey, it was a pleasure, sir. It's a good meet you. Am I okay for the evening? You look amazing. No problem if you could, please. <laughs> Injected a level of confidence, a level of excitement, but most of all, hope in the CU brand. He's bringing us back, right? But one man can't do it alone. It takes a village for us all to do that. You know that. And I'd, I'd also like to point out, if you could, there's a legend himself. He, he doesn't know this, but I, I grew up as a little kid playing at Baldwin, Baldwin Hills uh, Little League football. He was a quarterback for the Pittsburgh Steelers. I was a left handed African American quarterback. There weren't very many people that I could look up to. You, you never heard me say this, brother. I, I did not ever. I, I get chills. I get chills seeing you because you, you meant a lot to me when I was a kid. I didn't even know you. But you all know him. He's an absolute legend here at CU. Please give a round of applause for Cornell. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So although, although I know you all, you like me, but you didn't come here to hear, to hear me speak, okay? So I, I want to turn the mic over to our offensive coordinator, Coach Lewis, here. If you could, give a round of applause. Thanks, generosity, and being here with us to continue to move this thing forward and to take it to the highest that we all know this place can be under Coach's vision. You know, we just can't say thanks enough for your support. You know, excited for tomorrow. Uh, you know, offensively, we're going to play fast, looking to be able to, you know, control the line of scrimmage, take great calculated shots down the field, and, and, and maximize some big plays and get you guys up out of your seats and cheering and booting hot a little bit. So, <laughs> appreciate you guys being here. Thank you. Thank you. First of all, uh, thank you for having us. Uh, this is a very special place. We're excited to be here, and, and we thank you for, for everything that you've done to give us the opportunity to be able to bring Colorado football back to where it's supposed to be, to where I grew up watching. And I know we have no better leader right now to lead us into that than, uh, than Coach Prime. Yeah, you know, for us defensively, uh, tomorrow, what we want to find out, what we want to see, we want to see if we've developed the characteristics to play how we want to play at Colorado. It's not necessarily what we do, but it's how we do it. That's what we want to see. Or do we play fast? Do we play physical? Right? Do we cover people down the field? Do we tackle? Those are the things that we're looking for. But, you know, it's been an exciting time. Listen, I have no doubt in my mind that we will be able to carry this program where it needs to be, but we can't do it without you all, and we appreciate your support. Thank you. Drill them, please. <laughs> Who's the bold one to go first? I'll go first. <laughs> Unless we have the same barber. <laughs> Which, which group is better at this point, offense or defense? <laughs> <laughs> I think there's been a very good, healthy back and forth in, in all the competitive situations. I know that the offense has ran a few more gassers to this point <laughs> than the defense has. So, but there's been great, healthy back and forth. It's been very, very competitive. And, and the challenges that we see day in and day out, I know we're going to prepare our kids as we go to the future with the way that Coach Kelly's leading the defense and the way they fly around. Well, I feel, I feel the same way as Sean. I, I, I think one thing that makes you a better football player is what you see every day in practice, the competitiveness. And what we have to go against offensively challenges our guys, not only physically, but mentally, because how fast we play and the adjustments that we have to make. So we learn how to think fast and process. I would agree with him. There have been situations in the spring uh, you know, offense gets the best of the defense, defense gets the best of the offense. But you know, when you're the, when you're sitting where Coach Prime is, you want to see both people have success. Because if one's always having success, we're definitely in trouble. <laughs> All right, I'll go. Come on, somebody. <laughs> how, how have the kids who were here before adjusted? Great question. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> you know, that, that's one of the biggest challenges for our coaches and players you know, and, and, and I told the guys today, I said, listen, if it was easy, everybody would stay and everybody would be here. The truth of the matter is, 
and it's not personal, but some people aren't cut out for what our expectations are. And that's okay, because there's somebody else that you, somewhere else that you can go that you might meet their expectations. But what we're looking for are, are certain characteristics. And when we see those in players, it doesn't matter whether they were here before or we brought them in. We just want to see those characteristics. Yeah, absolutely. I always just build off of that. You know, Coach has done a fabulous job of being very, very clear and very kind to the kids in terms of that clarity, right? I think all of us in all of our arenas and all of our industries that we have, the professions that we're in, clear is kind. If you know what the expectations are, you know what the standards are, you know what your job is, you can go out and you can meet those standards, you can meet those expectations, and you can do your job to the best of your ability, right? So we've done that in all facets of it. Coaches has led from the top with all of that. And whether guys, like Coach was saying, guys that we brought in, guys that we retained, there are guys. Right, they're all here, they're all Colorado Buffs, and the guys that are answering that call, you know, are gonna help us win a lot of ball games and win championships and bring those trophies back home here to Bowl. Yes, sir. On offense, we're all <clears throat> pretty excited to see Shadour and, and, uh, and Travis, but can you talk a little bit about the, the running backs and, and, and how you see them right now? Yeah, I mean, the one guy who's really stood out is Hamerson. Anthony's done a really nice job. He's going to be running with the ones. And then Dylan Edwards, who should be, be more concerned about his, his high school prom, which is next week, if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> <laughs> he's been with us here this whole semester, and he's doing a really good job as well. So those are two guys that, as you guys are watching the scrimmage tomorrow, they flash. They've been consistently good and not occasionally great as we've gone through each and every single day. You know who those guys are going to be. You know what they bring to the table. And as play calls, that's really what we're looking for. Right? As you're building out the game plan, who's a guy that day in and day out, I know exactly who he's going to be, regardless of circumstance, regardless of how many people are in the stands. I know who he is. I know how he's going to respond. I know how he's going to compete. And I know what I'm going to get out of him. And those two guys have really separated themselves from the pack and are doing a really nice job. Talk a little bit about the recruiting this weekend because we've seen people all over town, and certainly I was at the Champion Center for a little bit today. And it's packed with everybody, and uh, it's exciting the energy levels there. But I know you have like 25, 30, 30 kids in. Yeah, well, I, and I think of a lot of work in the past. This didn't just didn't happen this weekend. This has been continuous since Coach has taken the job. And the one thing about college football. You're either recruiting or you're getting behind. And it is the lifeblood of your program. So, you know, being able to get people on campus so you can show them this beauty, show them our vision, that's what we have to do. But it, it takes a lot of work. Our coaches have done an incredible job. Our coaches, support staff, everybody involved in the organization, just like it takes a village to raise a child, it takes a village to recruit one. All right, and that includes everybody in this room. What are you guys doing about offensive defensive line? Great question. <laughs> <laughs> Developing and recruiting day. <laughs> right, I mean, we got the guys who are here, right? You know, big people beat up little people. We need to get more big people. We got to get our big people stronger so that we can control the trenches on both sides of the ball. And again, we're going to do that with our fabulous strength and conditioning staff. I think the summer conditioning program and the summer cycle that we are going to start here after Memorial Day weekend is going to be huge for the future success of our team, right? And again, with the recruits that we have on campus this weekend, the kids that we're going to continue to bring in, that talent acquisition piece, right, that we can infuse and get some immediate help and some long-term help as well. So we continue to build that competitive depth and the competitive maturity so that day in and day out, those guys are making each other better because there's better quality competition that they're going against day in and day out. You know, I, I, recruiting big guys, pretty simple philosophy. It's why they have weight divisions in boxing. Lightweights don't fight heavyweights, okay? And there's a reason for that. So we've got to make sure that we got heavyweights because we play in a heavyweight league. And that's what we're evaluating and that's what we're looking for. First of all, they got to look the part. Then they got to play the part. You know, so it, it is a challenge. And listen, there's not, when it comes to the offensive and defensive line, there are not as many guys out there. So they're far, they're few and far in between. So everybody's trying to get the same guy. Hmm. You know, it, it's sometimes like recruiting a, if you're recruiting a receiver, you know, some guy may be looking for a slot receiver versus a, a we're all looking for the same O-line and D-line, every school in the country. 
So that's where we have to separate ourselves and what we do as a program and our vision to be able to attract those guys. And that's where you win. That's where it starts is in the trenches. Mm -hmm. Rob, that was a great question. One, maybe two more, and then we'll head down and feast on some lobster and some chicken here, okay? Well, uh, it seems like the, the interior D linemen are always the toughest to get for all schools. Why is that? Like, why, are the, why aren't there more really talented, big interior D linemen? There just aren't that many men walking around yeah. that, nice. first of all, have the physical ability to do that, and then when you... Mm -hmm when you take that with the mental, it takes a mentally tough person to play in the trenches and play defensive line at this level mm -hmm. with our expectations. So there's, there's just not many of those guys out there, so that's why people, you know, and, and you're constantly evaluating. And, and that's why, and in recruiting, I, I know you all follow recruiting, and a lot of people ask me, well, so-and-so, they've got the four-star down in so-and-so. I'm like, listen, don't pay attention to how many stars a guy's got. The first thing Coach told us, I'm not inter interested in any of that. What I want to do is evaluate and find the best people for us. Because there are a lot of guys out there that don't have a lot of stars that wind up being pro football players. Just watch the draft on Thursday night. Hmm. There are going to be guys coming from teams that you've never heard of. And somebody, that might have been their only scholarship offer. So that means you've got to work harder and harder to find those guys. Last question, otherwise we're, we can wrap here. Jim? How about the three kids in the offensive line that were here previous? Um, I know Van Wiles is one, Wiley's one, and I can't remember. I think Tank's the other one. But those three kids have done a tremendous job. You know, Bam's a great young talent that has shown tremendous, great, tremendous result. And, and you know, he's battling through a little bit of an injury right now, so he might be limited a little bit tomorrow. But he's going to give it a go because that's who he is, and that's the character that he's shown and everything. But he's shown that he's going to be an integral piece to what we're doing. Right, Big Jake Wiley has done a tremendous job. We've worked him both at guard and tackle um, because I think his future ultimately be able to play on Sundays where he has that chance is going to be at guard. So we've you know worked with him a little bit there, and then Big Tank at left tackle has done an excellent job as well. But all those guys need to get a little bit a little bit stronger. Right, they need to have a better understanding of our conceptual understanding of how fast we play and how fast they need to process. But they've done a great job from where we started, you know, back in January all the way through winter conditioning through the installations. And the way they've competed. So I'm pleased with them, and, and you'll get a chance to put eyes on them and their development you know, here tomorrow down on the field. As you can tell, expectations are raised here in Boulder, right? Let's embrace it, right? Let's embrace it. Let's give these coaches a round of applause. Thank you guys. All right. Beth, Beth, can you help? We're going to follow Beth down, and we have a little secret path to get to the